Hey, what's good? It's your boy Smino. Check me out on the Bootleg Kev podcast, you know? Bootleg Kev show, special guest in here, Smino. What a do, kid? Welcome, man. Welcome. Hey, First of all, you just showed me uh, congratulations. 90 Proof is like the number three biggest debut song on Spotify for the week. Yeah, not just rap, just a song. Just all general. genres? Yeah, just, uh, just, yeah, that's hard. That's huge, man. In the U.S., appreciate it, bro. How's uh, how's that feel? It's cool. It made me want to do some more, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to see what else I can get up, you know what I'm saying, get accomplished. How did you, because yeah. uh, like obviously, um, you know, going back to those Dreamville sessions and shit like that, was, would you say that that was kind of like the origins of you like locking in with Cole and building that rapport with him? Yeah, um, that's how I really got to tap in with him. But low key, uh, I, I think my relationship with G, like, was my relationship with Dreamville in general. Mm -hmm. That's my boy. So, uh, yeah, bro, like, Cole pulled up on me at G's, like, he was having a lock in just in mm -hmm. LA and just. Nigga tapped me and I turned around and just called. Like, I fuck with you. I'm like, nigga, I fuck with you. That's crazy. Of course. You know, and that's how I got cool, with bro. But um, of course, the sessions down there made us, everybody way more cool. He made a whole lot of niggas like brothers. Yeah, it sort of feels like I feel like everybody's. It's like it was like a fraternity of whoever was able to like be lucky enough to be a part of those. Yeah, nah, shit for sure, like a fair house, bro. Yeah, for real. Yeah. I heard like uh, Giannis was there. Man, yeah, I'm in there. I'm talking about Chris Bosch behind Chris, me. I heard Chris Bosch was making beats. Yeah, making beats and backwoods, all kind of shit going crazy, bro. Yeah. Dude, Chris was just standing behind me one day. Because you would just be so in your bag, you don't realize who running around that motherfucker. But yeah, Giannis, all them was in there. They was like 19 at the time. Like, what was uh, Chris Bosch like? He was in that mug chilling. He was and cool. he was making beats? He was telling everybody my name, Chris. <laughs> Yeah. Well, like, well, yeah, we know, buddy. Yeah, we know. Nah, but like, yeah, one of my homies did. We was on some funny shit. We on some Chris Bosch looking ass nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? We looking at him, but so your friend one of my like homies didn't think he was really Chris Bosch. So he just like, yeah, oh, you you guys were like, yo, look at this Chris Bosch looking motherfucker. Yeah, he like Chris Bosch. Yeah, we yeah. fried. We like, this ain't Chris Bosch, nigga. You don't rap. Yeah, but I guess he do. Wait, he raps? I think he produced. He he tapped in. He How were the beats? I ain't heard no Chris Bosch beats. Hmm. I want to hear some Chris Bosh beats. You know though. who has an uh, NBA producer who has some of the worst beats I've ever heard Damn. that made it on the major labels Damn. or major albums? Ooh. Chris Webber. He had a beat. Dada. He had a beat on Nas's uh, "Hip Hop Is Dead" album that was so atrocious. Did it, you ever have some Dada's? Dada shoes? Supremes, the shoes. Yeah. Nah, I'm an, you know what's funny is I'm from the West Coast, so Dada was a little more popping on the West Coast, but I never, I never could do it. Didn't they spin? That was the Latrell Spreewell. The Spreewells. Yeah. yeah. That was an era. Yeah, the Spreewells. Dada oh, Supreme. God. I ain't had no Dada's. You didn't have any? Nah. You know, I mean, you know, you know who's dope? JaVale McGee's a dope producer. JaVale McGee, cool peoples, bro. And he, he's got dope beats. Yeah, down there in Phoenix right now, right? He no, made, not anymore. He's with the Mavericks now. I'm a Suns he fan. He went to the so Mavs? I, yeah, he got signed in the offseason, unfortunately, for the, us. This, this year? Yeah. Yeah, just oh, okay. this offseason, yeah. Nah, that's cool, but... um. I ain't know that nigga might be, but it makes sense. He had hit me up before, just on some like, "What's good?" But I feel like everybody in the league that, that hit me up, they probably make music. Now that I think about it, that's hard for sure. What is your team in St. Louis? The Celtics. That's interesting. The St. Louis Celtics. Yeah, you know how we coming, man. I was at the finals game last year, man. My 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 boy JT. You know what I'm saying? We ain't we ain't bring it home, but we're gonna bring it home next time. You know what I'm saying? That's all. I mean, listen, man. That coach is out, they, the, the coach is out there bringing it home for sure. Damn, bro, you wild as hell. <laughs> hey, man, I don't know what to say, bro. Emay, I don't know what to say, bro. Hey, Emay's hey. outside, bro. I mean, he's going to be outside on the couch. But, you know, God bless him. He, he, man, hey. Emay on no damn couch. That boy got money. He good. Yeah, you're right. It's a I'm nice about, couch. Yeah, that couch, a Bellini. You For feel sure. Me? He on a Bellini couch. Uh, I, I only had one experience in St. Louis. I went out there in, like, 2011, maybe, maybe 20. Yeah, it was 2011. Yeah. I went out there. There's a radio station out there that tried to hire me. Uh, a guy named Boogie D was out there. I turned the job down. But um, that night, I ended up, uh, Freddie Gibbs, Ninth Wonder, and Rhapsody had a show that LRG sponsored. And it was not a big popping show. It was kind of whatever. But after that, me and Fred went to East St. Louis, and we went to a place called The Pink Slip. You went to the slip? Yes. <laughs> right on, man. He done did <laughs> You was in the slip. They had you in the pink slip? Yeah. That's what's up. You had fun? I had a great time. Yeah. Is that, is that, uh, have you been to the pink slip? 
Yeah, I don't even think the slip open no more. Is it's it closed? closed? Yeah, I, don't, I ain't better to slip in a line. Man, that's some old school shit. I ain't did that in a minute. Mm. But I ain't lived in St. Louis in a while, too. But nigga, that's some. You, you, was, in, you was on some St. Louis shit. But East St. Louis. Different state. Ain't Illinois. St. Louis. Correct. For people who don't know, East St. Louis is in Illinois. Yeah, that's Illinois. Straight up. And then there's St. Louis. And St. Louis is St. Louis, USA. Because we don't claim Missouri. St. Louis, USA, then it's East St. Louis, Illinois. You don't claim Missouri. Missouri. Yeah, that's a red state. We a blue city, I guess, or something like that. But we don't really be fucking with the whole Missouri wave. That shit real racist and fucked up out there, bro. Straight up. I've heard. Yeah. Missouri terrible. Uh, I mean, it's it's like a swing state. So there's like all all sides of the coin there, right? Like you yeah. said, like the St. Louis is probably a blue city. It's definitely a swing state for a reason. Yeah, St. Louis where all the black people. Kansas City too. Like a lot. Of, you know what I'm saying? St. Louis, Kansas City. But shit, even more so St. Louis. Shout my KC niggas though. How far is KC from uh, St. Louis? A couple hours. Just a little drive. You know what I'm like when you're growing up, right? Obviously, St. Louis has had a successful rap scene. Shout out to Nelly. Shout out to the St. Louis Dicks, Chingy, Jaquan. We can go on and on. Yeah. Um, and then like obviously Kansas City has like Tech Nine and the strange music shit going on. Yeah. How influenced were you by just all that shit in general? I was influenced by the Lunatics. And Nelly on some how to rep St. Louis, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And uh, I think I was influenced by my city in the same way Nelly was. Like where I'm from, it's like some soulful shit. Like our, our parents listen to like a whole bunch of like old soulful shit. Like we all grow up in church. If you're from the hood, you grew up, you you was going to church or you was by church or it was some right. people by, from church people around you. So you feel me? All that shit kind of just inspire all that singy shit. You know what I'm saying? That, Bluesy shit, you know. Yeah, I think Nelly uh, successfully probably did like real melody and hip hop before what? most people. That nigga was like, probably Yo, Ma, before everybody. How you doing this shit, son? Yeah. Now, yeah, pick up the mic and yeah. put the drugs down. That's like one of the hardest Nelly songs ever, bro. Yeah, hundred percent. Loving me, bro. Oh god. And Free City was an underrated album. Yeah, Free City hard too. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Murphy Lee, man. Shout out to the whole. Uh, who else was from? Shout Star out Wars? to Murph Dirty, man. Real nigga, he vegan too. He's vegan. Yeah. Are you vegan? No. Yeah, good for you. Hell nah. I couldn't do it, man. Yeah, I think he's vegan shit. He look vegan nowadays. Have you thought about going vegan? Um, I, I, I eat some vegan meals. I'm just not finna go all the way vegan. I feel yeah. like it's like a cleanse thing. Like I just eat, you know what I'm saying? When do I feel like, like maybe I've been, like a week? Yeah, when I've been bullshitting with the mm-hmm. tequila too hard. You feel me? I'm I think gonna, tequila's vegan. It's agave for sure. Mm-hmm. For sure, damn, they're vegan. But uh, I'll lick a vegan, bro. I would hope so. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> like, shit. <laughs> I'll lick a vegan, bro. I'm like, is there something Because you said it like, you know, if I've been drinking tequila too much, uh, like tequila it was Tequila is honey. Hennessy is just grapes. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like all this shit is fruit. You're a tequila man. Nowadays, yeah. yeah. I used to be a cognac nigga. Now I'm a tequila nigga. It's a different drunk, isn't it? I just, um, I feel like cognac for when you alone. Cause the way cognac make me tired and ready to be gone and out. That's I feel like that's why people fight when they off Hennessy and shit. Cause they be down there tired. It's a violent drunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tequila's, Tequila's a little more fun. Happy drunk. Happy drunk. Oh God. Yeah, but I don't think, drink kids. I think something about the pandemic nigga. put tequila on in a new way with like you know the Casa and the Casamigos and yeah, Casamigos took off on that. Yeah, shout it. out to George Clooney. That's Clooney. George yeah. Clooney. That's his. That's his. Uh, that's we his. was drinking forty two in the panty though, Clooney. Yeah, I don't know where they, where they came from with that Casamigo shit, but we was drinking forty two heavy right before that shit. Everybody, forty two is a with little that price. Yeah, forty two is a little overrated. They came with that price. It's a little overrated. It's about the bottle. No, that's when you agree, it's, it's good. No, it's, it's good. It is smooth. I just drank a whole bottle of that shit at my birthday party. Damn. Yeah. Crazy. Must have been a rough night, huh? Man, nah, it wasn't at all. I was drinking water in between, bro. That's smart. Yeah, yeah I drank just as much water. You know you're a professional when you take your shot and then you take a big, big gulp of water and then you just do that the whole night and you should be all right. I done got OCD, bro. I can't be remotely thirsty, so I just drink water a lot. Mm. Yeah. You Are you OCD with all aspects of life or just Hell no, nah, just alcohol? water. Like, water, like If water. I'm thirsty, when I'm thirsty, I, I can't even go to bed without seeing a bottle of water first. Like I got to mm-hmm. see that motherfucker, then I'll go to sleep. Like, all right, bet. I can't eat unless... Like, I, if I run out of a drink at a restaurant, I'll stop eating until they give me a refill. I have to have a drink with my food oh, at all, okay, at okay, all okay. times. Why you be scared? You gonna need the Heimlich or some shit? Nah, I just, it's just, I don't know, bro. It's just, I just like to eat with, with drinks. I feel it. I mean, yeah, I feel it. Um, For people who don't know, St. Louis, 
because when I went there, it was green. It felt like real historic. Like it felt like uh, it just. I never seen nothing like St. Louis. Yeah, it's pretty, bro. It's a real pretty city, but but it's also I was gonna say it's also like tops the list all the time of like some of the deadliest cities in America. Yeah, it's definitely a place that like I think probably gets overlooked nationally in terms of like just the scene and just kind of what's going on there. Like, um, what would you for you like? Being like on the forefront of the new St. Louis, I guess. Who who some of the artists, some of the uh, groups, whoever that you you uh you know are taking note to that are from out there, man. From St. Louis, oh uh, shit! Sure. I personally work with a few people. Uh, one of my homies, my, my boy J Baby the Grady, he hard. My boy Barry, of course, always. Um, this nigga named Jordan Ward. He's super tight. He from St. Louis. He sing though. He do a little different shit. Mm-hmm. I, I'm real tapped in with like uh. Like the side of St. Louis that you probably wouldn't expect to be there. You feel me? Which brought me, you know what I'm saying about. But um, I don't know, bro. It's a whole. It's just so much shit going on in the loop right now, bro. Like literally, it's. I went. I was just down in St. Louis for a week. You feel me? For the first time in a minute. Like I ain't been able to go home for right. a minute. You feel me? But I was just down there for a week for a while, and uh, I booked the studio and shit. And I was just like, damn, bro, you feel me? Like all my all my partners I went to uh, school with, they the, they the ones that got the studios now. Like they the ones that got oh, the crazy. spots for yeah. us to do shit. You know what I'm saying? Dope. So yeah, it's cool to see that shit. Niggas producing, niggas doing all kind of cool shit. So hopefully it'll be more niggas come out the crib, you feel me, in the year to come. I ain't say years, I said the year to come too. Mm-hmm. Oh God. What up, y'all? We got to stop the interview to tell you about our new sponsors, our family at Hardeen Lost. Vegas, you see what it is. You see what it is. Welcome to the family, Hardeen, man. We're so excited. I've been going to Hardeen for so many years. For people who don't know, Hardeen is that premium cannabis dispensary, the number one award-winning dispensary in Las Vegas. I'm talking the biggest and best selection of cannabis product, and of course in Vegas, but I'm talking about worldwide. They're them motherfuckers, all right? So what you got to do is pull up when you're in Vegas to Hardeen. Go to Hardeen underscore Las Vegas. Shoot them that follow on Instagram. Go see them. Tell them I sent you. When you go to check out, be like, yo, Bootleg Kev sent me. I saw y'all talking about it on the Bootleg Kev podcast. Look, when you're in Vegas, they'll also deliver right to your room. Whatever you need, all right? Make sure you follow the crew, Hardeen underscore Las Vegas. Go to HardeenLasVegas.com. That's J-A-R-D-I-N, LasVegas.com. And don't forget, when you go to Vegas, you go to Hardeen, tell them I sent you, and they they might throw a little extra little eighth in the bag or something. A little discount, the bootleg discount, you know what I'm saying? Get them Packwoods, too. They gave me a Packwood the other day that, geez, I'm still recovering from. That shit blew my whole fucking face off. In the best way. Hardy in Las Vegas. All right, shout out to them. Let's get back to the interview. Talk about the title to this album that's coming, man. Love for Rent. Yeah. Yeah, Love for Rent. Um, I called that shit Love for Rent because, yeah, I don't know. We trying shit out. You feel me? That's where I said right now. We just trying shit out. Love for Rent. Like, basically, like, it's, it's really supposed to be, like, the whole concept is what I told, what I, what I, I already said this shit, but I'm going to say it again. The whole concept is, like, ways that, you feel me, I give love out to the point where I have enough to get that shit back to myself, you feel me? Mm. And uh, I kind of wrote it from that perspective, but like, I wasn't trying to be so like, um, what you call it, uh, introspective about love, more so just honest about like my, my real actions and what I was doing in the time while I was affected by that feeling, if that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. You got some water right quick. So you gotta have that water. Yeah, yeah. Always. You gotta stay hydrated, man. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's what love for rent about. That shit fire to me though. It's real fire. It's a great name. Yeah, yeah. It's real fire. Outside of J. Cole, any other features? Of mm-hmm. course there are. Yeah, we got a whole lot of features. Uh actually a lot of cool motherfuckers on the album. Uh, damn, can I say features yet? Give us one. Time. Can we get one? <laughs> one. Uh, who 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 I think? Um, Give me a rapping ass motherfucker that's on your album. A rap feature, that, just like, a rapper, rap. someone who can rap their ass off. I know somebody's rapping their ass off on that album. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, me. Um, and then uh, I say Lil Uzi. 
Uzi. Yeah. Okay. Uzi rap. Low like, key, Uzi rapping on my shit. Like, I think Uzi's rapping, rapping. I think Uzi be getting like not enough credit in terms of like how good he can rap. Because he can sing. Yeah. He be singing and shit. He got like other ideas. So I feel like, you know, when you ain't no rapping ass, this is what I do. I rap and I want to rap better than you ass nigga. People right. going to try to play. That's me shit. Motherfucker be trying to play with me, bro. I promise you on everything I love, I probably done said colder shit than most niggas. But I sang that shit so it come across like, mm -hmm. you feel me, how it come across. But yeah. How did you and Uzi link up? He liked my song, I Deserve. He had posted the balloons from mm -hmm. the video and shit. And uh, shit, I just randomly was smoking outside the studio. I was in the studio with uh, Saba and No ID. And <laughs> I was outside smoking and shit. This nigga, black truck just uh, pulled up. I'm damn. But like, stopped next to me, then nigga jumped out. This was this nigga Uzi and shit, and he was in the room next to me, so he walked in the room and shit. I went in with him. I was like, bro, I got this song, and I said your name, and I hooked him and played it for you. I played it for him, and that nigga did this shit. And he hopped on it. I was leaving to go uh, go to a little dinner and shit. Before I got out the Uber for dinner, he he sent me the song. Jesus. So that nigga did that fast. shit in like 10 minutes. Yeah. Wow. Hard, though. I love how you just pass over like you were in with No ID, and you know No ID is one of my favorite producers of all time, so shout out to No ID. No ID and Saba working on that thing. I was just there. You were just there. I was rapping my ass off in there too, though. Yeah, shout out to shout out to No ID. Who else? Uh, and the coldest thing about No ID is that this nigga named Dion and N O I D. It took me so long to know that. That's so hard. It is hard. That shit genius. It is genius. Chicago nigga. Shout out to Chicago. Shout out Straight to No up. ID. Um, who's on, who's handling production on this album? Any any producers that you can shout out? I mean, yeah, Monty Booker, my boy Groovy, he did the uh, Groove, did this uh, Nighty Proof that 90 just came proof, out. Yeah, my boy Felix, Kyle Banks, Childish Major, and myself. Them the producers. It was all it's all internal shit. Am I missing somebody? Yeah, that's that's. I think it's. I think that's. Yeah. When you like can handle some of your own production, is it like you know we think of some artists who kind of came in the game as producers and then there's guys like Jay Cole or Crit who like were have been doing both kind of the whole time but like they're more known as an artist. Would you ever produce for other artists or like even like Hell yeah. go down that avenue where you like make it a thing where you're like pitching beats to like artists and shit? I wouldn't pitch beats. I mean everybody that ever been in the studio with me understand uh how what I do in the studio, you know what I'm saying? So Right. I think it'll be more of a thing where I'm just like, let's just lock in, see what you're trying to do. Uh, let me let me try yeah. to help help yeah. steer the ship on something creatively with you. Yeah, let's just figure it out. That's mm -hmm. where I be at. Like I love working with people and collabs. I think I did like thirty fucking collabs last year. I'm on a lot of albums. I've been out of town. It's crazy. I kept going to uh, we was in Atlanta, New York, mm -hmm. wherever. But everybody on tour right now. So shit, I've been just performing a bunch with the homies and shit. So that shit got me thirsty to tour. Th got me back thirsty. You got a tour coming up? Hell yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Announcing soon? Low key, uh, any damn day now. Yeah, we finna announce it with the album and all that. Are you headlining? Yeah, but I'm I'm doing like a uh, it's like a like a co headline vibe. You feel me? It's gonna be lit mm. on the game. When will this uh, tour announcement happen? Because by the time that <laughs> by the, by the time this interview comes out, it might already be out. Do you guys have a date? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna we gonna announce that shit real soon. I don't really give a fuck. Y'all do what y'all wanna do. No, I'm saying like folk gonna come through. You know what I'm saying? Y'all heard here first, y'all heard it there first, it don't matter, bro. But we finna go crazy, bro. We finna be back on You road. and who? I can't really, you know. Oh, you know, okay, okay. I can't really say it. Mm. I'll tell you what. You and J.I.D.? Me and who? Nah? No? No, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just throwing names out there. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just fishing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway. Uh, That'll be hard, though. Yo, it's Bootleg Kev here to tell you about our partners at my bookie. Damn it, football season. We're in the thick of it right now. I hit big last week too, man. I want to give a shout out to uh to my guy who gave me the pick. Shout out my guy, Sportsbook Killer. But listen, what you got to do is go to my bookie right now. Get in on this NFL action. You know, NBA's coming up too. You could bet on anything you want. They got the player props. You could do the a parlay builder. You could bet on your favorite team to win the Super Bowl. Get them odds up. Whatever it is, the most important thing: get that first time deposit bonus. That means when you sign up for your account, use the promo code BOOTLEG, B-O-O-T-L-E-G, and you will get a deposit match. So if you put in $200, they're going to give you $200 on top of that to gamble with for free. If you put in $1,000, they're going to match that deposit with a free $1,000 for you to gamble with 
right now. So what the fuck are you waiting for? Let's get this money. Let's watch some fucking football. And let's get paid with my bookie. Who's your favorite? It's been a pretty dope year for music. Outside of your album that has not come out yet. What's your favorite album of the year? Or your favorite albums of the year? Steve Lacey. Steve Lacey's incredible. Um, damn, let me look at my phone, bro. I, I, I got to see what I've been listening to, bro. There'll be so much shit going on in my head. Because I've really been fucking with some shit. There's been some great ones. I think Forever Story's up there. Kendrick's album. I like, yeah, I like, I like Jid album a lot too. The new Freddie Gibbs album is crazy. I ain't heard the new Freddie yet. That shit just dropped, right? Triple S, yeah, that shit's hard. Um, Steve Lacey. I when that one album come out from them boys? Can I call you Rose? Did that was that this year? I think that dropped this year. Who you like, talking about? Man, something in the indications, man. What's their name, bro? Let's be some salt. It's some. Psycho Souls. Oh yeah, the Psycho Souls. My bad, my bad. Hold on. I gotta see if it's the yeah, these niggas drop. If this drop this year, this might be my yeah. Yup, the Psycho Souls, bro. I don't even understand why this shit this far, but this shit far. But they got far shit. Uh but Steve Lacey probably had the most interesting shit to me this year, cause Yeah, he's a very unique artist. I feel like he's got a dope that just it doesn't remind me of many people, you know what I mean? That's very it's kinda like you. I feel like you guys are very one and the same in terms of just like, when I hear you, I know it's you. Yeah. And there's not a lot of people that can sound that sound like you. That's crazy. Before or after, you know. That's tight, bro. Yeah. yeah I fuck. I fuck with Steve. I'm gonna say Steve probably might have my favorite shit. Yeah, so. yeah. Shout out to him, man. Shout out to him. Uh, do you feel like with like now that we've kind of gotten over the pandemic, was there anything that you were missing as an artist during that time that has kind of like kind of adjusted the way you're looking at the music business because you know a lot of artists they they depended on going and getting bags at the club or the live shows or you know we heard of a lot of artists like who were kind of hurting during the pandemic was there anything that like you kind of took from the pandemic that you're able to kind of apply to your your business model as an artist now moving forward or anything you learned I feel like, bro, I was pushing through the pandemic super smooth. Like, I don't know. I probably just got more, if anything, I got just more uh, detail. Like, I, I know more about my actual business, like my everything that goes nah, on. That shit's important. Yeah, I know more about my shit like, than anything. Like, I know about every part. But um, I say that's it because through the pandemic, we was, we was good. I actually, I was decent in the pandemic, bro. Like, I'm, because, you know what I'm saying, like, I built a brand outside of just being a rapper. Mm -hmm. So through that shit, I can like, it's like another just whole thing, bro. Like that's like a whole different life for me. Like I sell hoodies, I sell clothes and shit like that. So that shit brings a whole different type of thing to my revenue in my a business. A whole nother revenue stream. Yeah. So That's pandemic proof. I mean, I think music is pandemic proof. To music be is pandemic proof, but however, touring though, touring, touring is, is not, not. Yeah, and it was like touring. My favorite part of this shit, touring in, in the studio, all the shit in between that turns it to business. Right. I hate that shit. I hate music business. I hate the business. I love the fact that you know what I'm saying. I'm able to exist in this shit, and I've been on for about five, six years now. Like sign, you know what I'm saying. I was with Interscope, now I'm with Motown. Shout out to them. But like, you know what I'm saying. I I think. The business is kind of, it just affects the talent at all times, like for, for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of, uh, I guess to, the, a better way to answer your question is, um, I did a lot of like uh, like purifying myself of the bullshit from the business and cleansing my motherfucking mm -hmm. mind from that shit. And like, I think my album turned in a better direction because I feel like the album I was finna drop, like while I was still in the role, like... Before the pandemic and right. shit was just like, oh, yeah. Because yeah, it's been I'm a few years since we got an album, right? Yeah. So, been like four years. That but shit's crazy. That motherfucker just was more so like, oh, yeah, nigga, I'm finna be the biggest. Like, I felt it. Like, I felt like I, I felt my momentum. I'm like, this shit finna go crazy. I'm like, my next shit going crazy. So I think I made songs that was gonna like sound good like mm -hmm. to the world opposed to just like going inward like let me like try to make my best So shit. this is like the album we're gonna get is kind of like the second iteration of, of an album. Third. 
the third version of man this album so it's funny because this album i'm talking about is all the way mixed and mastered by that nigga ali you know yeah Kendrick. by ali shout to yeah y'all know y'all know y'all know ali bro Engineers. but it's 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 mixed and mastered and shit like we mixed and mastered another album which is the album that's coming after this uh love for rent album and shit so you already have Albums in the can, just ready to go. Hell, you think I've been doing, bro? Like, I mean, it's been four years. Yeah, man. like I, I've been in the studio. Niggas be like, you need to ride to the studio, drop the album. I'm like, man, bitch, shut up. I, I've been in the studio every day. Like, you feel me? I don't work for us. I'm gonna go. So but, this album comes out. How much longer before you drop the other one? I ain't back. I ain't. So that that was not on purpose, though. Like that whole thing. Like I said, I switched labels. You feel me? And I, a lot of people be like, man, you going through label shit? Hell, no. Nah, we having our way. Really? Mm-hmm. Like it's more so just like. I was just trying to be smart and like build a rapport with the people that I'm gonna be working with next, and I ain't trying right. to just be stepping because I seen how I wasn't really like able to move how I wanted to in the last shit. Because you feel me, if everybody ain't on the same page, it don't work. And like I said, like I learned a lot about the business and what to what to use and what to not use. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think sometimes like when you're an artist and you're on a major label, you have a team, like, and all you're doing is worrying about the creative part. Sometimes shit gets kind of like like falls through the cracks. Yeah. Whether it's like features, whether it's like you know certain communication with other people's camps. Because I always hear that shit where it'd be like, "Yo, I was in the studio with so and so, and now now his now his label ain't clearing the record." Like, yeah. and it's like, "Yo, sometimes like yeah. that it really ain't got shit to do with the artist." Nah, bro. Like, you know what I'm the saying? The business be weird, bro. Yeah. It be so weird. There's so many songs that ain't gonna come out that y'all motherfuckers never gonna hear because niggas just won't clear shit. And Would you just be down to leak that shit? I mean, obviously not you, but. <laughs> Like an anonymous DJ, man. I don't. I don't know. That sound incriminating, bro. I, ain't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I miss the days where we used to just get random like songs leaked with like hella fucking random like websites drops all over them. Man, that shit scared me, bro. Like, I don't even. I'll be like, fuck. They didn't got my shit, bro. What else they got? <laughs> like, fuck. Burn the iCloud. <laughs> Have you ever had anyone leak any of your shit? Yeah, bro. They they leaked uh, some shit. One of the songs that's on this album got leaked, but it's cool. Shit. It's fine. I ain't, I'm like that shit so far. So how fuck. does how do you think that happens? Because nowadays people text songs so often. I'm not gonna say how I think it happened. I tell you to the side because if I tell you how I think it happened, a nigga might not have thought like that and be like, oh okay. I think I'm like it happens a lot because people will record at studios and then when they leave, they just leave the session and their shit on a. But computer. that's what I was gonna say. Why you tell them? Why you getting them game, bro? <laughs> Nah. That's what I was going to say, bro. Look. Bro, I have a recording studio. We're sitting in my studio now. You know how many artists have recorded like... I mean, I've had like major <sighs> artists record here. Yeah. And then nine months later, their team reaches out and be like, hey, could we get our sessions from last year? Nah, be and like I'm like, this. y'all didn't take them nine months ago. But obviously I give it to them. But it's like the fact that like, I, like this dude's... Half of this dude's album has been sitting on my fucking computer... Thank God it's me who had it, but like you know, some of these studios people be working in are fucking weird. Yeah, or engineers got, are weird, interns, yeah. whoever. Or could have got deleted. That would have been even worse. That's worse because what if the fucking what if what if you're you're depending on my computer not to crash and me nah. to have a backup? Just get your files, bro. If you just get your files, just get up out of here with the files, bro. That's the main way that shit happened, bro. A hundred niggas be tweaking at the studio. But if I get a new intern. His ass be sweeping to one in the morning just to get that file, but he be like, I'm sweeping this same spot to this mm-hmm. nigga leave. Fuck you talking about? Hey, what up, y'all? It's Bootleg Kev here to stop the interview. Sorry, uh, but we got to pay the fucking bills. And you know, not only do we have to pay the bills, but we also got to take care of them cocks out there. That's right. Make sure you go to bluechew.com right now. You know, the Bootleg Kev podcast, we are presented by Blue Chew proudly. I happen to every once in a while dabbling a little chewski, you know what I'm saying? And let me tell you something, my dick thanks me for it every single time. Uh, so listen, if you go to Blue Chew, use the promo code BOOTLEG, you're going to get your first month supply for free. Now we're talking the same active ingredient as Viagra, as Cialis, without the awkward doctor's appointment visit. You just go online, they get you taken care of, it gets delivered right to your fucking door in discreet packaging. It's a beautiful thing. And how about this? Brand new product alert on Blue Chew, all right? And I'm going to fuck this up for sure, so I'm going to try to read it. Uh, Now, Blue Chew has a mint-flavored chewable with Bardenafil, which is the same active ingredient, in Levitra and Staxin. So shout out to Levitra. Same active ingredient in the mint-flavored chewables. So what are we doing? 
Go get you a little mint boy. Go get you a little blue chew. Whatever the fuck you need. Just know whatever young lady or man or et cetera that you're dealing with, they're going to fucking thank you for it because your dick's going to be harder than it's ever been in your whole fucking life, man. It's going to be great. And like if you're a single guy, take a blue chew, jack off. Be a better jerk, I'll tell you that. All right? Bluechew.com. Go right now. And, uh, you know, I know we have a lot of male listeners who like underground rap, so chances are you're not getting a lot of pussy. But I promise you one thing. You take that Blue Chew, you're going to beat your dick like it stole something all night long. Bluechew.com. Use that promo code bootleg right now, and they will give you the first month for free. So go do that shit. I see you have a Black Panther shirt on. I'm curious. um, What are your thoughts on Kanye's T-shirt that said White Lives Matter today that he that he went viral for wearing at his uh, fashion show. Did you see it? Of course I've seen that shit. This shit's bro. crazy. I mean, um, White Lives Matter t-shirt? Yeah. Look, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Look, bro. Like, I just, I, I'm going to just say Black Lives Matter, bro. Obviously. Yeah. I'm going to just say that, bro. That's what I'm going to say. Black Lives Matter gang. I'm just interested in like whatever his explanation is. Cause I saw a picture. Of it's the, gonna be some. Well, the picture. Of it's the, gonna be some like you know what I'm saying. Living Buddha, living Christ vibes. Well, what the, he, what the his picture of the front be. of the shirt was like a bunch of clan members. So I was just very confused. What? I see. I, I don't know. I do not know what the hell. I don't know, bro. Mm. The only clan that matters is Wu Tang. I don't Shout give out a to Wu Tang. By the way, Wu Tang Clan and Nas are performing in L. A. Is that tonight? That's tonight. Right? Straight up. Yeah. That's tonight. That's Hollywood hard. Bowl. Damn, for real. Wu Tang, Nas, and, should we go? And Busta Rhymes. We should go. And but Busta? Busta Rhymes is opening. That's actually hard. The only thing that sucks about the Wu Tang aspect is Method Man's not gonna be there. Why he on he's shooting power right now? No, he just sat he sat it out. You know, the Wu Tang business is I mean, listen, when there's nine guys. Yeah, somebody ain't gonna be happy. I just seen uh M E T H O D man that uh um, Maybe he can't. That's his boy. He went crazy. That oh. man ain't miss a beat. Dexterity is impressive. I saw Method Man and Red Man when I was 12 on the Hard Knock Life tour. Yeah. No, I, I ain't never seen Red Man in they person. They were floating through the air on fucking wires and shit. And then DMX came on and then it was Jay. That's how you know they been smoking weed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were smoking weed when it was like the weed that we think is like boof now is like their life. Where you from? I'm from Phoenix. Ah, well. Well, you grew up on the West Coast. Yeah. Was it always Kush with y'all, or was y'all smoking Reggie? Reggie, for sure. Because I'm just like, the way I'm like, the gas out here is just crazy. Lots so I'm like, I'm imagining us growing up just getting our hands on this shit, smoking, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. niggas had to go through the Reggie days to get to their Kush days. They had to. You feel man. what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, damn, did these little niggas just grow up just straight up on crack? Like, straight up cushed out? No, those Reggie days were, I think about some, how some of the weed used to look back in the day. It, it used to it used to look that weed used to look crazy. Bro. I seen some real Reggie in North Carolina the other day. I bet you did. Some that real like ass Reggie, bro. I wish I took a picture of that shit. St. Louis is also another one of those like middle of the country mar- markets that you know. <clears throat> um, got the gas right. They either have the gas or they have the some fruit. Nigga from St. Louis tell you he got that fruit. Go the other way. I may or may not know from experience, but let's just say. Certain guys from certain cities might come to LA and be like, I just need something that'll pass as indoor in, in my city because I'm not because <laughs> I they don't know better out there. I be smoking gas when I'm some home. Some high end um you Chicago. know, like some high end light depth shit. Midwest, bro. Ain't nothing me about the Midwest, bro. I just say that. Some niggas be having Reggie yeah. and you know what I'm saying? It's just it, it happens. But when I was in Detroit, um we were out there a few maybe two months ago. Went to the liquor store, and in the back of the liquor store, uh, there was a guy who was selling uh, fake eighth bags from like all the big like Cali weed companies. So there'd be like an eight, like you could buy an eighth bag of like runts or cookies or Gary Payton or whatever, and put whatever weed you wanted in it. And the guy, there was like a line. It was like a dollar a bag, so you could just buy whatever weed you get. Stuff that I got that new cookie shit, and it could be anything in there, but it's sealed. So do you? How much you sell it for? A dollar a bag for an empty bag, an empty branded bag. Damn. Okay. Not a bad hustle. You well, know. It was Reggie, though. No, no, no. They were selling empty bags to people who sold drugs. 
Oh, I missed the whole thing. My bad. So imagine so you were saying like, Brothers was selling the bag. Imagine this is a bag that says cookies on it and it's nah, baby blue. Yeah. You could buy, They, I think they did a deal if you buy like a pound's worth of bags. So you could just stuff whatever weed you buy and then stuff it in there and then, you know. No, nah, that's hard. Damn. Yeah. Finesse in the game. Super finesse. That's smart. Super finesse. Okay, so uh, album officially out when? Um, I'm about to announce that too. Okay, I ain't announced Jesus that yet, Christ. but it, it's coming out. About to announce everything. October, yeah. October. October We're bro. in October, man. Late October, bro. <laughs> October, man. It's coming. So what, the last Friday of October? It's one of these days. I don't drop on Fridays either, bro. Like, what do you drop? <laughs> you just dropped a song on a Friday. Albums. I never dropped the album on a Friday. So what are you doing? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? I just like going off cycle with my albums. It's kind of just... So what day is I do? What day of the week? I can't tell you yet, Kev. You going old <laughs> school? Going Tuesday? Like back in the day, we used to buy CDs. Man, I like how you don't. You don't. You just keep asking because it's. You know what I'm saying. So it's coming out on a Tuesday. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Taking it vintage, old school. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. What he said, but Tuesday, uh, uh, November thirty third. You know what I'm saying? It's not a real day. <laughs> not a real day. <laughs> November 33rd, Tuesday, 2000 and 2000. Your boy. Hey, I love your grills, shit. man. Are those like, obviously, they're, they're not perms? Like, perm. you can could, you could nah, pop them out. No, perm. no, no, I'm talking about your teeth. Your teeth. Like, they're not permanent. Your you te- got a perm under your head? I said, your teeth permanent. Your oh. teeth. Your grill. Your teeth. My, are they permanent? Now, nah, that wood grain. <laughs> That's what it looks like. That wood grain on that gold shit. But you could pop those out and in and out when you want. Probably. Yeah. Do you take them? I mean, obviously, don't say probably. Can you take them out? I should be able to. Do you go to sleep with those in your mouth? Whenever I lay down. Like. <laughs> like your dentist is not happy with you right now. You, if, you, if, if those aren't permanent, you should take them things out. I don't go to the dentist. I go to the tooth fairy. Mm-hmm. I see what you did there. So what you're saying is you're losing a lot of teeth as a grown man. Nah, nah. As a young man, I'm gaining teeth. Mm. Like a baby or some shit. <laughs> On me, new teeth every day. Well, cause I, I when I lived in Florida, like I had a grill. Yeah. And uh, that shit, like you had to like take it out, clean it, otherwise your mouth would fucking smell like funky man, metal. You man. think oh man, okay, oh yeah, I clean my grill, man. I gotta That's ask. Nasty. That is nasty. Yeah, I clean my grill. I try not to smoke in it unless I'm too drunk and I'm, I'm just belligerent. What about eating in it? You gotta no, take it out. No, no you gotta take it bro. out, right? Yeah. That's trifling, bro. Yeah. I feel bad for the guys who do like the like I was talking to Tusi. Uh, he's he's got permanent teeth. That's different though. No, but he's 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 he uh, is removing them and going back to normal teeth because he said it's just too much maintenance. It's got to be a lot of maintenance though because it be diamonds too and it feel grit like your mouth feel your teeth feel different. It's not as smooth. You know what I'm saying? But nah, that shit way different. They perms. It's like you got it. You gonna not eat? Mm-hmm. Yeah, nah. I like the wood grain. That's an orig- that's original. Yeah, man, wood grain, man. Eat it up. <laughs> you already know. They, hey, you know the motherfuckers be, they bit my last grill, my Opal grill. Kim Kardashian stole that shit. Lil Nas X, who else uh, had that shit? Uh, Which grill was this? A lot of people. It was Opal grill with the uh, the bust down Opal mm-hmm. grill. They, they know that. You know what I mean? Nas told me. Ain't, it's little though. Lil Nas X admitted that it was. Yeah, he pulled up on me and said, like, yeah, man, I got the, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I seen him. It's cool. That shit hard. Mm. But Kim Kardashian, she ain't show me no love. So that's that's like, I'm, I just want Kim K to just, you know what I'm saying? Just show love. She's, I, I, I mean, designed I, all her grills for her. Oh, God. I didn't, I've never seen her wearing a grill. She put that shit on, bro. It's an October mm. baby thing. You know, Opal, like our birthstone. I think she a Libra. Do you think uh, Kim Kardashian wearing a grill is cultural appropriation? At this point, nah. Nah. Like, at this point, nah. When you say at this point, what do you mean? It just, at this point, nah. Like, what? <laughs> like, at this point, nah. It ain't like Kim Kardashian wearing a grill is not. Shout out to Kim, too, because uh, yeah. I feel like she's done a lot of good on the legal legal side, trying to get people out of jail. Oh, yeah. Free my uncle, Kim, on game. Where you at? Call me. Make it happen, free Kim. Free my uncle, bro. And free shorty blood, please. Mm. We good. We got to stop the interview, tell you about our partners at Odd Socks. Well, first of all, Let's check out the brand new collab. Look at these. The bootleg Kev sock. You see my pink ass face on those fucking socks? Nobody wants to buy those. We're going to figure out a way to give them away, though. Uh, but look, Odd Socks the most comfortable socks in the world. 
Um, and the best thing about Odd Socks is they're our family, man. I've been rocking with these guys for about 10 years now, and I will not wear anything else on my feet. Like, I swear to God, I'm about to take my shoe off. I'm about to take the, look, what is this? Smells great, too. That's an Odd Sock right there. That's an Odd Sock basic. You know what I'm saying? We fuck with Odd Socks. You should, too. They got the crazy licenses. We're talking about Nickelodeon. Shout out to Patrick. Motherfucking Cheez-Its. Baywatch. How about macaroni underwear? Look at these boys right here. Let's just crack these motherfuckers open real quick. What do we got in here? Come on, man. Yeah, a little Pop-Tart underwear. You know what I mean? Yeah. These are the Odd Socks basics. All right, so if you go to the website right now, order you some underwear, order you some socks, use the promo code BOOTLEGKEV. That's one word all together, BOOTLEGKEV, and you will save 20% off at checkout. Go to oddsocksofficial.com. One more time, that's oddsocksofficial.com. Promo code bootleg Kev, and you will save 20% off your order. Of course, we're presented by Odd Socks, and we are proud to say so. All right, let's get back to the interview. Uh, all right, man. Well, listen, the new album coming out on a Tuesday in October. Late October. Bruh, funny. Hey, Kev, you funny. Boy, you Kevin Hart. I don't know what that means. Nah, he's funny here. Album coming Kevin song, Hart also. Real drop Tober. A little overrated as a comedian, Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart? He's a little overrated. I'm a Bernie Mac type nigga, like of course. Uh, Bernie Mac, one of the goats. DC on Fly is probably like one of the funniest niggas, uh, like just naturally, like right, right now. And then like Trip that whole, I like, I like they whole Camp Carlos. All them. oh yeah, the eighty five South. Eighty five South, they fire. I love them. They're hilarious. Yeah, I love them, bro. They funny. Have you gone on their show yet? Mm -mm, nah, you gotta yet. make it happen this time. I went. Um, I met I met a bunch of them niggas when I, when I went on Wild and Out. You watch a lot of uh, podcasts. Yeah, I like I like podcast. I feel like that's like the rawest shit right now to me. It's like cool podcast. Which podcast you watch the most? Drink Champs. Drink Champs is the best. Yeah, I watch Drink Champs the most. I don't Did like when they the blow Tur the horn. Though. The Turk interview. Yeah, the Turk interview was just turned up right away. That mo that motherfucker Turk. He had a lot to say. He had a lot to say. Yeah, that shit was crazy. Yeah, that shout shit was crazy. Shout out to the Hot Boys. Man, legendary, man. You know what I'm saying? Hot boy, all them. That shit was legendary, man. I was like a motherfucker three, four years old, but that shit was legendary. My big sister jumping around to that shit. You know I mean? Well, listen, man. Appreciate you pulling up. Smino, the new record is out. 90 Proof just debuted top three on Spotify. Mm. Love for Rent coming out shortly. Song. Before November. Yeah. Mm, but not. November, Rary. 32nd. Well, listen. Love man. for running on the way. I'll tap in for real. Shout out, Kev, man. Little Uzi's on the album. So's Little Nas X. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me, man. Huh? No? Uh, I know. Taylor Nas pulled up to the studio, man. We out. Man. There it is. <laughs>